Is this worth the comparatively lofty price tag that it seems to command? Synology NAS solutions, let's be honest, if you're looking at a turnkey NAS, that is a NAS that can be deployed out of the box that includes the hardware and the software and the apps and all that lark, Synology pretty much has things sewn up at the top end there. And although there's been some slight wobbles around compatibility in their latest versions of Synology's DSM that has certainly left some people unhappy, I think when it comes to the hardware and the software of a Synology solution, there's a lot to be purchased. But it has to be said that if you know what you are doing, if you can shop around and you've got yourself a screwdriver and some time, is it possible to just build one of these for yourself? And how much money would you actually save? And that's what this video is about. I want to try to recreate as many Synology solutions primarily in the desktop category, I might attack some rack mount on the next video, to see just how much it would cost to recreate some of the more popular Synology NAS models, the Plus series and XS series, some of the SMB solutions, right the way down to the home. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to avoid secondhand, I'm going to avoid pre-made. And again, I'm going to keep reiterating this throughout the video. This isn't me trying to see how much this NAS is and what's the best NAS I can build for that money. It is me trying to recreate Synology NAS solutions using DIY components and seeing how much that costs to recreate. I'm going to be leaning heavily on uh, mobile processors there because I could go for desktop alternatives but they generally have a much higher power consumption. So I'm going to be erring as much as I can towards compact uh, mobile SOC components and ITX motherboards. Because if you look at the majority of NAS solutions from Synology with the exception of the higher end, maybe uh, larger controller rack mounts, the majority of them use ITX custom motherboards. And I'll touch on this later on. Keep in mind, um, Synology is a Taiwanese-based company, and the majority of solutions to recreate uh, a Synology NAS are going to come from China. So anyone attempting anything like this, factor in the tax, baby. But apart from that, let's get our hands dirty. So let's start off with probably the most affordable access point into the whole of DSM, the DS224 Plus and the DS423 Plus. This gives you access to the entirety of the Synology DSM app platform. There's a couple of real tech options as well, but those don't give you access to genuinely everything. So these are what we're going to recreate. If we go on B&H, we can see that the 2 bay is 299, and we can see that the 4 bay, scrolling down here, is 499 there. So this, again, as mentioned, is probably one of the easiest ones to access. Access. It takes advantage of the J4125 CPU, that's a 20, 2019 2020 CPU, and there's actually quite a lot of ITX and even micro ITX motherboards with this CPU pre attached. There's actually d different ways in which you can access it. So, for example, if you wanted the motherboard, you know, a la carte as it is, with just the CPU there, no RAM, no storage, you can get it for as low as 119. And I know there's going to be some of you immediately saying, well, there's other options out there, cough, cough. And you're right, the price increase, if you want to go to say the i3 isn't huge but we're not trying to get the best for 299 and 499 dollars we are trying to recreate these systems to see what the price tag would be and if we have a look we can even go into some of those pf sense uh router boxes or open wrt router boxes which have got multiple outlets and ports with that j4125 but we can see some of those price tags pretty slim in which you could take that apart and get access to that hardware if you choose so for example j4125 here on uh, a pf sense router box there with 4 gig of memory, that's DDR4, and 128 gig of memory, you can, you know, take that apart, it's got a couple of LAN ports there, 2.5 gig in some cases, and again, you can scale it up, and that in itself, with that 4 gig and 128 gig SSD, is just 97 nicker right now, and again, factoring your shipping, factoring your tax from China, etc, etc there, or go directly to some of these Chinese partners and have a look at these, and again, I'm aware this is not buying from Taiwan, a huge difference there in terms of the product, uh, in terms of the pr uh, product origin, tax and more. So again, we are still looking at Chinese alternatives to a Taiwanese brand, so you've got to factor that in. But even then, going directly to them and foregoing, going via AliExpress or Alibaba or even Amazon, you can see with the 4 gig, 128 gig SSD, that's just 164. Now, I know what you're thinking, what about the rest of it? And you're right. Although it's easy to get just a motherboard, and again, we've got that micro alternative there at $101. You're still going to need the rest of the components. You can get a two-bay ITX micro case. This is as close as I could get in terms of scale to Synology's two-bay. And this one was 40, uh, just shy of $46 there to get hold of that two-bay case. It's got two hot swappable bays. It's got the slot there in the back plane there to enjoy. You're not going to be able to take advantage of a PCIe upgrade slot with ease, without a riser at least. 
but still that's an option to you you could scale up for the four bay there and again there's numerous versions of this case in the market there and this one affords a pci upgrade slot as well and that's a just shy of 86 nicker there you're going to need sata cables and you're going to need a psu and again at this scale the majority of these boards use a dc barrel outlet there but again that's kind of what you're looking at for that price obviously we'll talk about software pricing at another point but that's really the cost of recreating one of these and now we move on to when things get difficult. These are systems that utilize the V1500V quad-core AMD embedded Ryzen processor. Again, four-core, eight-thread, and although it's available in a few different configurations of Rackman as well, I'm really gonna focus as much as I can on the desktop here. Now, so we've got the eight bay, we've got the six bay we just looked at, and indeed there is a 12 bay as well. And once again, returning to B&H, though we can see that that eight bay is one cent short of a grand. The six bay is one cent short of 900. And indeed, the larger 12 bay there is one cent short of $1,800 there. So one of the earliest problems we're going to have, unlike when we were looking at the Plus Series J4125 models, is embedded Ryzen processors are really tough to get. Now, not all of them are embedded Ryzen. We've got standard AM4 desktop socket processors there, and a lot of these are used or refurb. Indeed, if you're looking for used or refurb, there's loads of options. As I said in the intro, I'm only looking at new options there. And the majority of the V1000, V3000 CPUs that Synology utilize um, at, the, at the moment, and I know they're not using V3000, but you know, one day, when they do go down that road, this is where you can't really buy retail because when you're looking at a lot of the AMD Ryzen options, it's the majority of which being desktop grade. There's a few server grade and mobile SOC grade, but the majority of them arrive pre-soldered to the motherboard. So if you go for a desktop option, yes, you're going to be able to save a bit of bunts, but you are looking at a higher TDP for the, the majority of these CPUs, which are going to up the power consumption. For, for the record, it is near impossible to buy this CPU right now. So we're going to have to go for comparative AMD uh, AM4 socket versions out there to try and scale down. Now, now again, you don't have to shop exclusively on Chinese websites uh, like you know, your AliExpress and stuff like that. You can go ahead if you choose to go to more recommended retailers and go via um, Gigabyte offerings or, you know, others in the market are available. There are other server grade options out there but again a lot of these are reused or refurbed uh, intel xeon processors we see it time and time again again none of these are directly comparable in terms of uh, more power efficiency afforded to the v1500b processor but also just a simple architecture of a four core eight thread cpu that supports ecc memory because that's the other big bummer i know a lot more amd processors than windows processors support ecc but finding a CPU that is a quad-core, eight-thread CPU uh, with embedded M uh, SOC architecture that's ECC memory supported is a lot harder than you think it is. Although there are plenty of motherboards out there in ITX and ATX that are going to allow for, you know, an embedded Ryzen setup one way or another, desktop or server, there isn't a huge number that can be scaled in the way you want for the Synology systems. Again, I'm factoring ECC memory, more on that in a moment, given that the majority of these processors do actually open the door to that. But once you start looking at kind of ready-made options or even uh, CPU and uh, memory separate, although there are AMD options in the market that are SOC-based and they're quite affordable, none of them really match that build spec that we're seeing here on these larger systems either they don't provide enough SATA outfits you know whether it is that they don't have physical SATA port there is of course the uh, CWWK demon board that has 10 ports on it but then after that things you know other parts get affected the PCIe upgrade slot for example so when I was looking at multiple AMD options in the market right now again pre-soldered or otherwise not all of them were really m meaning and covering everything we wanted so eventually as much as i wanted desperately to find an amd build with different cpus trying to scale against what we saw in the embedded ryzen the closest i came across was this one here this was an itx ryzen it was you know 5000 and 6000 series again you could get the cpu and memory included to keep it affordable so for example 5600 with a quarter of a terabyte ssd and eight gig of memory non-ecc memory at that and that's so dim rather than any kind of longer dim version there was 
50 nicker, but I probably found in terms of covering as much as I could of an approximation of the hardware in these three Synology systems was actually scaling back to an Intel based processor here. So for example, if you go for this motherboard here, this motherboard not only arrives if you go for the standard version with a Pentium 5 core processor here, which was relatively scalable uh, in terms of TDP, cores, threads and more against uh, the uh, Synology one there, of course, the Synology being an 8-thread, and this is a f uh, five core uh, processor with the thread count lessened as well, you could scale it up towards an Intel i5 there that was a four core 8-thread processor if you chose to for $239 there. Also, this um, motherboard and CPU combo here not only arrives with two SATA ports on board, uh, here at the bottom, but on top of that, it arrives with a uh, SFF output that could be utilized to add four more hard drive bays and another one down the bottom that, although can be used for M.2 NVMEs, can also be used for four more hard drives. And two M.2 slots at four times four and three times one meant that you could have that OS drive in the lower class slot and still have more storage support capacity available if you chose to. It was probably one of the best options I could find, but of course, once you've got that, you've got to factor in your ECC memory. And again, the minute you start looking at dim memory rather than so dim, depending on the motherboard you look at, prices do tend to eke up. Keep in mind, of course, UDIM versus RDIM versus SODIM and the rest. And of course, after that, you've got to factor in your PSU as well. It's actually a lot harder to approximate these specifications. Again, I'm sorry to keep reminding you, this is not about what is the best NAS I can build for this money. It is how much does it cost to build this NAS. And if you thought things were crazy before, what about when you look at some of the earliest XS series devices? I'm not going to look at the SA series or the FS series or even some of the more enterprisey, larger scale rack mounts in the XS series. I'm just going to look at the entry point into them. And more predominantly, the 1823 XS, which is powered by a quad core AMD Ryzen processor there with 8 gig of ECC memory. But on top of that, I'm going to look at the 1621 Plus because that is still the entry point into the XS series, although stocks of this have rapidly developed depleted, this took advantage of a quad-core Xeon-based processor there. Now, trying to emulate these two builds is incredibly difficult in terms of finding the right hardware now, and again, some of you might argue that's because Synology uses older hardware, and I think there's arguments for and against that, but once you look at different, you know, pre-built solutions in the market, and I know some of you are going to be screaming you could build it yourself using desktop components, and you're right, but if you went down that road with desktop components, power consumption would comparatively go through the roof compared with server grade CPUs, you know, desktop versus some of those mobile SOC. But even this one, this takes advantage of an Intel i3 12th generation processor. Keep in mind, some of these do not have integrated graphics, so you are going to have to factor in that into your BIOS and your first time installation, but 158 nicker there for the motherboard, the CPU and the RAM. It's not the newest processor in the market, but it's still pretty darn good. Keep in mind, of course, this is a full ATX MOBO. Moving forward, you've got there such stuff like this the b760 motherboard there you can get it with the uh, 12th generation i5 get it with 32 gig of memory and it's a pretty darn good deal with two 2.5 gig ad and network adapters there on the rear ecc memory support as well and the m.2 when you need it or, and I know some of you have probably already wanted to raise this, what if you wanted to take advantage of X server grade components? I know I've talked about new components, but some of you may already be thinking about getting secondhand server grade stuff on eBay or processors that have been pulled out of old servers and into these. So for example, this is the X99 build. I talked about this in one of my best uh, DIY cost-effective NAS builds. This is a 10 SATA ready motherboard here. This allows you to have a very, very old gen CPU pre-attached there. And with this one, M.2s are a bit light on the ground and you've got a PCIe upgrade. But overall, this is a very old build. But sadly, once you start looking at some of the CPUs, some of the uh, Xeons that were running, the 1531, for example, that still exists in some Synology NAS systems, the age difference isn't actually vastly different between those two options. You are, of course, going to have to factor in things like 10GBE on those by adding PCIe cards or ones like this one that allow you to have M.2 slots and 10GBE, or even the QNAP offering that does work on PC and Linux architecture that allows you to add across multiple of their QM2 cards, 2 times M.2 and a 10GBE connection as well rear on that system. 
It's well put together and I like it. And if you are someone that is inquiring about rack mounts, you can, of course, get server grade second hand um, equipment like this one. You can get renewed, refurbished. It comes under different names. But you can spend 500 to a grand on getting a system that's pre built with the storage included. Again, we could talk a long time about the X Velociraptor and server class SAS SSDs till the cows come home and the durability left on them. But, you know, there is a degree of affordability there. I I personally don't rate these, at least in terms of this comparison, but I know there is an audience. And if you do want to get one of these options, the money that can be saved is exponential. Are these comparable in terms of hardware to a Synology? Well, I think there is an argument back and forth. They are second hand, they have gone through the ringer, and certainly those storage drives have been hit to all hell. But some of the hardware in some of the you know remaining 2019 2020 generation hardware from Synology is showing its age a little bit there. I don't think these are viable alternatives in for a Synology, but I think as a server, if you're not in love with the Synology DSM platform then these things can be appealing. Realistically, we've always known that a Synology NAS is not about its hardware. Trying to justify the price of a Synology NAS on hardware alone is just not viable. We've seen countless examples today of how to build, if not the same hardware that a Synology NAS provides, then very similar in terms of a modular creation. However, Realistically, Synology do not market their products in terms of hardware, they do it in terms of software. And for that, DSM will always kind of set a gold standard for a lot of users. If you know what you're doing, TrueNAS and Unraid and the like are always going to be appealing to you in terms of customization and control. But for an unknown or someone making their first tippy toes away from cloud services into their own NAS, Synology's DSM is worth its weight in gold in terms of user friendly applications, ease of setup, and hand holding at nearly all the time. Do users graduate from that platform? I think so. I think a lot of users will eventually find that the Synology NAS platform, as good as it is and as smooth as it is, will often restrict you in terms of what you can do when you really want to stretch your muscles. Look at console gaming versus PC gaming. It's a classic example. But when we were looking at a lot of those DIY examples of modularly building a number of desktop Synology NAS solutions, time and time again, we were finding that we were saving 25 to as high as 40% in terms of like-for-like -like hardware. Now, does that mean that you shouldn't buy Synology NAS? Definitely not. I still think the brand is great. I still think the software is unique in so many ways. And the nearest alternatives in the market from the likes of QNAP and more are still a decent step away in terms of software. But if you know what you are doing, and if you don't mind getting a bit of dirt on your hands, a bit of silicon paste under your fingernails, there are more affordable ways to achieve it. But just keep in mind, you're going to be managing multiple warranties if and when the time comes. You're not going to be getting such efficient hardware in a number of states. We've already seen it with the CPU, particularly when we're looking at more of the comp, you know, kind of compact DIY MOBOs and more. That is the bit that's incredibly difficult to recreate when trying to remake a Synology with your screwdriver and AliExpress. Ultimately, I think Synology Now Solutions do have an audience and I do think their product justifies the price if you need the software. And if you don't need the software, maybe look elsewhere. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Pretty much everything we talked about today and all of the products are linked below in the description. If you do think you can recreate a Synology Now build better than me, hit the comments down there and do it. Try to avoid secondhand, of course. When it comes to secondhand goods there, it's very easy to recreate a lot of this, and I had to really wade through a lot of secondhand server class CPUs to try and recreate a lot of these systems. If you want to see me attack the rack mounts, let me know. And if you do want to recreate or buy some of the items mentioned today, in the description below will be links. So one, if you found the video helpful, and two, you were going to go to those shops anyway, and three, you know, this video has helped, please use those links. That all means that using those links results in a commission here to NAS Compares. Me and Eddie at NAS Compares here, it's only us doing what we do, making the videos, doing the guides and the free advice section. It really helps us out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.